Hey everybody, Chuck Barone here. Monday, March the 20th, 2022. And we're off and running with another week of madness and nonsense and craziness like I've never seen before, guys. It just, I'm constantly shocked by, I think that it can't get any crazier and it just constantly does. I got some interesting stuff to talk about today. Before we start the show, though, as always, I want to welcome everybody to the show. Again, say how much we appreciate your guys' support, how much it means to us, you guys watching these videos, your response to them, your comments, likes, and shares. We appreciate it, guys. Markets today. Well, it was just the weirdest market day ever. Well, I shouldn't say ever. Just another weird market day. You would think that the stock market... It's been getting quite a bit of bad news to digest, right? But no, today the market rallies. I guess uh, this whole banking thing now, whew, it's over. Yay, we can take a deep breath and now it's all done. In these delusional weirdos' blue night dreams. Because it just, it's... The idea that one bank, when all these banks are facing the same pressures, their assets are falling in value, Depositors getting nervous, especially with regional banks. The idea that it's going to end now, after this, like the, the idea that inflation was transitory, let's just call this banking crisis transitory too, then, shall we? But anyway, the market believes it's over. Yay, rally is up today. Dow up 382 points. You got the uh, SP up 34, the NASDAQ up 45. So the stock market has a nice little rally today. Good for, good for stockholders. I just don't think it's anything serious where it's going to hold for very long. Bond market today, selling off, yields rising. 10-year, up 8 basis points, sitting at 3.48%. The 2-year, up 13 basis points, sitting at 3.98%. So we have the inversion narrowing down to 50 basis points. It was over 100 um, so that's kind of a weird sign. Uh, rates still exceptionally, in my mind, exceptionally low here. I mean, just a very, very short time ago, these rates looked completely different. And anybody that, again, going back to this whole idea that everything's going to be just great from now on, the Fed's not done raising rates, guys. They're just not. This inflation thing, we're, we're not even close to winning this battle yet. So the market, again, just seems like it has false, some false beliefs that uh, are going to end up costing investors money. Dollar today down again. Dollar just kind of drifting. Not anything dramatic, just drifting down 103.30 on the index. And it just rallied back up to over 104. Looked like it was closing in on 105. And now right back down to gravity, taking hold right back down to earth. And surprisingly, usually when the dollar's down, metals, gold, and silver can have a nice run. That didn't happen today. So gold down $11.10 at $1,978.20. Did briefly for today get above $2,000 per ounce. That's happening any second, guys. Silver down $0.08 cents today, $22.52. I think it'll be a little bit harder for silver to get to $25 than it will be for gold to get to $2,000. Going to happen, guys. Going to happen. Oil up $0.80 cents today. Not a very big move, but stopping this downward drift it's been having. $67.73 for a barrel of West Texas Intermediate. Looks like the new trough now between 65 and 70 per barrel. We'll watch, how we, we'll watch and see what happens. As I've been telling everybody for a while, be careful in oil and gas and you know this sector right now. Very difficult, very volatile. A lot of moving parts here, a lot of geopolitical stuff to consider. Be very cautious in this sector, even though it's likely gonna remain incredibly profitable. That doesn't always mean you're going to get the best stock price. And Bitcoin today, just to wrap the market up, down small, $127. 27970 for Bitcoin. A nice, still rallying on, man, even though down small today. Nice numbers for Bitcoin. My Bitcoin holder has been piping up in the comments. We appreciate hearing from you guys. Um, glad to see Bitcoin rallying up and firming up 
for the people who've been holding it and are waiting to make some scores. I think you're going to have a chance at it. Um, news you guys need to know today. Well, we all know that this is a big, big week coming up, guys. Federal Reserve will start their Federal Open Market Committee meeting tomorrow. We'll get a rate hike on Wednesday. The bets are all over the place in the Wall Street casino, though. Goldman Sachs and a lot of big banks, a lot of big players on Wall Street, believe the Fed will not raise rates on Monday. A lot of people, kind of like me in the middle here, feel like the Fed doesn't want to appear weak on this inflation thing, so they're going to raise rates by the minimum at a quarter. Some, some analysts feel like that uh, the Fed's going to stay aggressive and raise a half because of the disappointing inflation numbers we've gotten. I guess we'll have to see what the environment's like over the next couple of days because this stuff literally subject to change minute by minute, depending on the developments. I mean, you got big geopolitical stuff happening at the same time all of this is happening. Our allies looking weak our, and our enemy is looking stronger. You got uh, the Chinese President Xi in, in Moscow today holding hands with his, his buddy, President Putin. Um, it looks like the world is lining up and picking its teams, doesn't it, guys? You got the one group with China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, and their satellites. You got the other group with the United States and Canada, the European Union, NATO, um, and all of our allies and satellites. And it looks like everybody in the whole world now is starting to pick teams here. I don't really see that leading to something good, guys. You know, we had hoped that at the end of the Cold War, you know, Santayana called it the end of history. Well, it looks like he was not correct. <laughs> and, uh, you know, history being written every day. And now, you know, the United States had better stop the stupid sooner or later and start getting down to business, man. You know, if we're going to just fight about nonsense while the entire world is burning up, and I'm not talking climate change, I'm talking a whole bunch of political events, our enemies emboldened, our, our allies in trouble, not that we're in debt up to our friggin' eyebrows, and on and on, we're just not taking anything very seriously. We're just going to pretend like everything's automatic, and because we're the United States, it's always going to work out in our favor. Well, you know what? That isn't really etched in stone anywhere, guys. Everything's worked out in our favor in the past, or most things have. I guess not so much in the recent history, but we were smarter. We were better. We were more cohesive. We worked together. While they were petty fighting, we were building the world. Now we're petty fighting and we're watching the world fall apart all around us. It's just, it's, it's, it's really sad, man. Today I was, just occurred to me, I was listening to this report this morning and everybody's talking about the big bank deal in Switzerland, UBS coming to the rescue, purchasing Credit Suisse for $3.2 billion, the distressed bank being bought out by their stronger big brother. Um, everybody's portraying UBS as these heroes who are, you know, here to save the Swiss banking system and here to do, you know, the right thing. And it's not about, you know, money. Eh, well, let's just take a look at that for a second. On Friday, when you, when Credit Suisse was basically at their very worst, the company was worth $8 billion. So now UBS is going to come in get a 60% discount, and be hailed as a hero for it. So this banking thing, then the light bulb clicked on. Okay, so this banking thing is nothing more than another big bullshit scam so the big guys can eat up the little guys. That's what this is. Now let's go back for a second. A lot of people have been making jokes about poor Barney Frank sitting on the board of the signature bank that just collapsed, he being the author of the Dodd-Frank bill, which was supposed to prevent the banking crisis like we had in 2008 and 9 from ever happening again. Well, Barney is kind of special, but the sad news is it's not really Barney's fault 
because he was out of Congress in 2017 when they changed Dodd-Frank all around and ex exempted financial institutions that had le assets less than $250 billion. Companies like Silicon Valley Bank, like Signature Bank, and probably the next one we'll be reading about. So they exempted all these small regionals who then could now didn't have to keep the kind of reserves that the majors do. They didn't have to pass stress tests and have be able to meet all these standards. They were screaming bloody murder about it because it costs money to be regulated. Well, great, deregulation works again in our favor here, guys, as the big swooping in. So you got UBS swallowing up Credit Suisse. Flagstar comes up now, and they're going to buy Signature Bank's assets, what remains of them. I can't remember who it is, but somebody already scooped up the dregs of Silicon Valley Bank. So the big just coming in now, doing what they do. But now they created this situation where it almost seems like they're it's altruistic. It's, they're being really good people, good citizens doing this. It just cracks me up, man. It's just these guys getting this stuff down, man, okay? Where the distraction is so big, it takes a minute to actually see what in the hell's going on. But here's what the hell's going on in this banking stuff. The bigs swallowing up the littles. So now we got Wednesday. Rate increase likely going to be a quarter. At least that's what I believe. I got to say, man, St. Jerome has got some problems, man. This guy was looking up. It was looking like, wow, this could be like a really successful Fed chair because inflation numbers were coming down pretty consistently toward the end of last year. And then we kind of got into the holiday season and the numbers started changing. And as the new year turned, everything just started going south for Powell. Now we have these bankers. And then you add in the fact the political pressure he's under. Senator Warren today I'll leave my comments on Senator Warren to myself. But she, knowing it all, has decided that Paul has failed and should not be the chairman of the Federal Reserve. It's a good thing we let senators decide this stuff, right? Because the Fed has a job to do, and it's not about social engineering, which is what the senators and Senator Warren are all about. So, you know, just but I use the I use it as an example to show you because I've been saying <clears throat> Powell's going to come under pressure from both sides. You know, the Democrats are going to scream bloody murder; he's too tight. The Republicans are going to scream bloody murder; he's too loose. There's not going to be any winning for him. We get to watch it all happen because we know what's coming. So we now let's see when and how it plays out. And finally, up to 190. I was reading this article; it made me laugh. Up to 190 other regional banks could fail if they had a run like Silicon Valley Bank or Signature Bank did. <laughs> Who's surprised to hear that? How many banks can survive a run from depositors? We know Silicon Valley Bank got hit with $42 billion in withdrawals in one day. That's a bank run, man. Not very many banks could survive something like that, even the majors. That would be a catastrophic event for them. So the hit talking this stuff, it just, it's just nuts, guys. So here's what we know. The inflation picture has not changed in spite of all the distraction. Still above 6%. Producer prices coming down, hopefully. That means consumer prices will follow. We'll see if the corporations just decide to suck up that money for themselves, though, and call it inflation, but we all know it's called greedflation, right? Um, so we know inflation is where it is. We know it's not hasn't come down, and we know that if the Federal Reserve does not keep their foot on the gas pedal, it's not going to go down. It's going to start going back up because the threat of the recession now is driving prices down. The recession will finish the job, and it looks like they're doing a pretty good job of bringing that on. But, uh, guys, banks in trouble. These regional banks, every single one of them has something to worry about, man. If, if a short seller comes in and starts banging on their stock like they did these other two banks, and your depositors hear about this run on the bank stocks, 
They start asking what the heck's happening. They get scared. They run to the bank. They take their money out. Enough people do that. Down goes the bank, man. So be very, very cautious. Don't listen much to what you're hearing in the media. It's just a giant distraction to keep you confused. Stay on the path we've been talking about. Be cautious. Be careful. Play your cards very close to your vest. Stash as much money as you can. I'm, this recession is coming. I think that now we have all the signs we need. I don't like, they can talk all these good economic numbers they want. Um, we'll see. But recession coming. Inflation numbers high. That's called stagflation. And you add in the threat of bank failures and a literal banking sector collapse. Got a beautiful stew there, don't we, guys? <laughs> anyway, that's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow to bring you guys up to date. Day one of the Federal Open Market Committee meeting. We'll be looking for employment numbers. We'll be looking for statistics on manufacturing and housing. And there's all kind of data coming out this week. We're going to keep you guys posted. Let it know how it affects your portfolio. If there's anything extraordinary you guys need to be doing, you're going to hear it from us first. Back again tomorrow. Until then, guys. Take care. Thanks.